What's going on, fight fans? It's Sebastian, and I'm back with a boxing tip. Now, I just want to give a big congratulations to Julius Ndongo with a big left-hand knockout over Edward Troynovsky. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was making a breakdown and prediction video of this fight last night, and I was actually picking Edward Troynovsky to win this fight. And I thought I should mention that just so you know that I'm keeping it honest with you guys. I don't want you guys to feel like... I'm being dishonest like oh he came out with the video saying you know he picked this dude but you know just kind of how things go like that but anyway I just want to give another congratulations to Julius Ndongo for capturing the IBF junior welterweight world title with that aside I want to go ahead and talk about one particular thing that I seen that set up that big one punch knockout and that's pretty much the positioning of both fighters feet when Julius and Dongo threw that huge left hand to knock out Edward Troynovsky. So if you notice in the first bit of that fight you can see Julius and Dongo was doing a really good job of keeping Troynovsky at the end of his punches which was making him reach anytime he was trying to throw a punch he was overextending and you can see him kind of falling forward every time he threw a punch and that was just from a few you know quick little back steps that Julius and Dongo was using. Now, right before Julius Ndongo threw that huge left hand, Edward Troynovsky kind of mounted a body attack, so he kind of went in and it looked like he reached a little bit when he was going for the body, and Julius Ndongo used a quick little sidestep to avoid the attack. Now, but what's important is the feet positioning of when Edward Troynovsky came back from his body attack. When Julius Ndongo did that quick little sidestep, it actually gave him lead foot dominance over Troynovsky. Now you see this a lot when it comes to southpaws fighting an orthodox fighter. One of the best methods of getting your shots off on an opposite handed fighter is having lead foot dominance and that's when your lead foot is on the outside of the opponent's lead foot. And by establishing that position it actually creates an angle to throw any form of power punch down a straight line and Julius Ndongo took full advantage of that when he unleashed that huge like left hookish looking punch. Now I'm not gonna lie I'm not a fan of fights ending this early I don't feel like it gives it a chance to manifest but you could tell from the jump that Troy was gonna have his hands full with uh, Julius Ndongo. Now I like that this happens because it creates a question in every hardcore boxing fans head that they are asking themselves and I'm pretty sure we all know what that question is. Is Julius and Dongo ready to take on the likes of Bud Crawford? And personally, I haven't answered that question for myself yet. I would like to see him face another one of the top 140 pound fighters, maybe like a Victor Postal or an Adrian Broner first. And I'm just throwing out a couple names, it doesn't have to be particularly those guys. But once he shows out a little bit more, I would like to see him in the Crawford fight. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this fight and what's next for Julius Ndongo. Uh, I do wish him the best of luck uh, in future affairs in his career. And I want to say congratulations again for capturing the IBF Junior Welterweight title. And I would like to ask the boxing fans to comment and share your thoughts about how you felt the fight went, even though it was a very short fight. And just comment on what you think Julius Ndongo should do next, what fight you would like to see him in, your thoughts about Julius Ndongo himself, or if you would like to see a rematch between these two fighters because you felt like the fight didn't really have a chance to manifest. But once again, I want to thank you in advance for watching. My name is Sebastian. This is The Boxing Tip. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.